Hello, and welcome to Paper Play with Julie Kay. Welcome, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me. And today I'm continuing to work on the hashtag Little Bits of Lace 2024. And today I'm actually going to be putting my journal, my envelope flip journal together. And then the next video will hopefully be of me showcasing the completed journal. I'm doing a complete walkthrough, but I thought for those that want to see how I actually put the journal together, um, this is the video for that. And I am going to be doing the pamphlet stitch, so I will show you guys how I do that. <clears throat> and on the previous video, if you've been watching all of them, I did talk about um, some of the mistakes I made or things I don't needed to fix on this cover. And I did that in the last video. But since I filmed that video, um, I have decided to kind of, I was going to use this as my cover. But I'm thinking what I want to do is just to use this as my actual journal. And so I'll sew this together. This is how chunky it ended up being. Um, and I'm just going to use this as like a protective cover. So I'm not going to sew this into this if that makes sense. I just decided I really loved how this looked on the inside and so I'm just going to use this as a protective cover um, for this other part of the journal. It's still all going to be together but as you guys can see this is one chunky 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 monkey um, but I do love it. I love that all the ideas are in one journal. I did think about maybe trying to split it up into like a couple different signatures but I love how it is, so I'm just going to go with it. But I just wanted to tell you that I did kind of sway from my original plan. Um, originally, I was going to sew this into the cover, but I'm just going to leave this as a loose cover, protective cover. So um, if you did watch the last episode where I fixed a couple of things to make this a little bit wider, I did go ahead and I did glue this trim down to where the spine is. So I don't think that was on the last video, but I just wanted to let you know that I did do that step. Um, so I'm going to set this aside. And then I also still have this um, tassel that we made in one of our episodes to add to that cover. I just hadn't, ha hadn't done that yet. And again, I have this little doily thing that I'm going to wrap on the outside. And I think I am going to sew this into the journal cover, just so you guys know. And the only other thing that I did with my like envelope flips before I started filming is you can see I added some binder clips and that's just to keep things from not flipping and flapping so much while I'm trying to sew this together. I did it on the back side and then here's like the paper part of the signature that goes inside the envelope flip part. I mean this would have been just a nice journal itself, just the envelope parts, but since I had so many ideas I had to add some paper. Um, signature to it too so that's why it's so chunky so the first thing I'm just going to do here real quick just so I kind of have it eyeballed is I'm going to figure out where the middle of this doily is and just kind of crease it a little bit just so I kind of can eyeball that when I'm sewing in my signature because I'm not going to make any um, holes in that but um, the first thing I like to do with my when I'm doing the pamphlet stitch is I will take a piece of um, scrap paper the same length as my journal. So you can see it's the same length and I'm just going to make a template that I'm going to use to punch all of my holes. And so as you can see it's the same length and I'm just going to show you guys how I do it. Some people do a little bit more measuring. Mine is measuring but I call it measuring the easy way. And I am going to um, draw some lines on there just so you guys can see the folds and, and stuff easily. So the first thing I did is just a scratch piece of typewriting paper. You can do whatever you want. And I usually save these. And I do have like a huge pile of them right here in my desk just to show you that I do save them. Because sometimes I will just go through those and use them instead of creating a brand new template, but I want to show the, for everyone that's just starting out um, how I approach making my, my pamphlet stitch holes. And so I'm just drawing this black line in. That's just where the fold is, just so you guys can see where the fold is. Um, that's all I'm doing right there. 
So then what I do is once I have a fold down the middle, I'm going to fold this way. So I'm just going to pull it up and fold. So again, I'm just going to draw that in so there's a fold right here in the middle. And I'll try and zoom in just a little bit more, but I want to make sure I get it all on screen. I don't want to go off screen. So after I have this fold in the middle, the next thing I like to do is I like to fold the bottom up to that line or to the middle piece. And then I also do that with a top. So I fold that down. So now I've made two more folds. So let me just add those lines in so that you guys can see them. So now I have those two folds. So now um, I'm also going to fold just up one more time from the bottom and the top. So there's a fold. And then I'll do this one also. And basically what I'm doing is just segmenting it. I In the end I want to be able to have four evenly spaced holes for my pamphlet stitch is what I'm trying to create. And using the pamphlet stitch is kind of my favorite way to to bind journals. So we're almost done. So now I need to have evenly spaced ones here too, and these two, so that they're all spaced the same. So what I like to do here is I will take this piece, so I'm taking the bottom up, and I'm just folding up to the second from the top line. So hopefully that makes sense. And then so I made a line right here. And I want to do the same thing from up here, but I just find it easier to, so I'm just going to rotate this for the moment just because I find it easier to do it this way. So again, I'm taking the bottom because I rotated it and I'm just going up to the second from the top line or the fold and I'm folding again. And for some, this might be the long or the roundabout way to go ahead and make holes in your journal. Um, this just happened to be the way I learned how to do it when I first started making journals. And I believe the gal's name was um, Cheryl, and she was Deli Girl, and then she had some numbers behind her name here on YouTube. But she hasn't made videos in a long time. I believe she still has her channel up, though, all of her old videos up. But this was how she did it, and that's kind of how I learned um, because I hate measuring. And so I like doing that. So now the next thing is, is we need to make holes. So this will be our template. And what I like to do, too, before I go any further is I like to write the word top. Sometimes I write the word bottom on here too, just so that I know what the top of the template is and what the bottom of the template is. Um, so if you wanna do that. And then again, because I need four evenly spaced holes. So here is the, the dead center and I don't need to make a hole there cause I'm gonna put a hole here. So I'll make just a little X where I'm gonna make my holes in my journal. And then I'm also going to make a hole here and then a hole here. And that's going to be my template that I'm going to use for all of my pages. And then to create my holes, let me see here. I like to just use a tool like this. And it's called a Japanese screw punch. And screw is S-C-R-E-W. And you have to have like a craft mat underneath. But you just press down. And it creates, and I don't know how easy, but it did, did create a hole right here through it. I know some people just, um, they'll just take their journals and they'll just take their, their needle and they'll just go through, they'll just measure exactly where they want it. But I like to have a template, I find it easier. It just, again, it's just my method of how I like to do it. And so I already actually had one made from before that I already made some some marks on here. 
Um, again, I use this Japanese screw punch, but if you don't have one, you can just use like a paper awl that looks kind of like this. It might have a different top on it, just depending upon. Um, or again, if you don't have any of those fancy tools, just kind of a blunt needle, you're gonna be able to punch through and make holes too. Um, so if you don't have the fancy tools, you can still make holes. There's still ways to do it. So um, don't stress about that. So again, I have the template and it's as long as the biggest part of my, my papers are. So this is the envelope part of the journal, the envelope flip part. Again, it's the same, same length. But then the other thing I also like to do is decide like if you if I have any other pages that I kind of want to be the same or the holes are exactly the same in my journal. Like for instance, right here, I have, and I'm just gonna take this stuff off so it doesn't flop here. I have some My Porch Prints papers in one of the signatures. And so what I like to do is just kind of eyeball where it is. And as you can see, hopefully on this template, I did draw some lines and I just put the word MPP there for my porch prints just so I know that that's the thing. Um, so if I want the holes exactly the same in every piece of this paper, I do that. If I have some smaller pieces, I might make some other little notes on there. Again, that's just my method to how I like to do things. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make holes in this outer part of this journal, which again is my envelope flip part. And I just need a pencil and I had one on my desk here. Here it is. So I have this nice template that I've punched holes in. And what I like to do is I will actually just fold it. You can line it up like this onto your fold line and then draw little dots where your holes are. Um, but I find I'm even more accurate is if I fold it and I can still see where my holes are. And then I put it on the fold line. So here's the fold line. And I will just draw the little dot. And I actually put it in the wrong spot. I didn't measure here. I'm going to do that for each of the holes, and I know my hands are kind of in the way. I do apologize, but I don't know how else to do this on camera and still get it right. And this is just my way of being as accurate as possible with my holes for before I go ahead and do the pamphlet stitch. So now I'm just going to kind of look at it, and I know this didn't really show up very well, even for me. My pencil must not have... It doesn't like the washi tape. Let me see if I can just make a little marker, use a marker instead. So I think for me that shows up better. I know you guys are gonna have a hard time seeing it. Um, but there are some black dots on here now. And so I just do one more little look at where I drew all of those just to make sure that they're that they look like they're in the actual fold. And they, it looks good, so. Um, so next, I'm just gonna set this aside after I've made the holes. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing for all of the pages in here. Um, and I've already actually pre-done a lot of these before I started filming today. I'm just going to do this first one with you guys. So now, obviously, this was the same length as the envelope part, but now you guys can see that this is shorter. But because I already lined up where I wanted this to go on here, I'm just going to go ahead and line it up. I made those little marks for where I want it to line up with the My Porch prints. And again... Um, I'll just go in and I think I'll use the dark marker here just so you guys can see it possibly better. And I just want to make sure I make my little template where I'm putting my little holes. Again, I'm doing it right in the middle of the page where the fold is. And 
and it might show up a little bit better on this paper than it did on the washi paper. So you guys can see where I did the holes. And so I will go through and then do that for each page in here. Um, I do want to talk real briefly about a couple of pages. So that one's fine. Now this one, if you guys remember, we did, um, we used a little bit of lace as a connector piece in between pages. This one I'm not going to go ahead and draw any holes on. And that's because it's lace and the, um, the needle should go right through it. But when I do line up my papers for where I want it, in my journal when I'm gonna sew it in. I do wanna make sure that it's gonna get hooked up with at least two holes. So wherever I place it, which I'm just gonna place it in the middle, which is fine. And again, all these ones all have holes in them because I pre-did that. But I would do the same thing with all of these. I don't know if there's any other. So let me just talk about this page. So again, this one was the envelope and if you guys even see on this one what I chose to do is I chose to hit as many holes as I could in my template again you want to do at least two so because you want it to be sewn in I mean if I were to um, if it was a really small page and you only have one hole it's not gonna it's, it's gonna flap all over the place so you need to have it at least in two spots in your journal um, to have the holes in it so now once you have put all your holes in it or you've drawn your dots for your templates, now you're gonna go back and you're gonna use your Japanese screw punch or your paper all, and you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna punch those holes out. And this one's kind of fat, this one's a little bit harder to do. Um, I'm just gonna check here to make sure I'm on camera. But I'm gonna punch holes, and this one I might have to go through a couple of times. I just gotta stick a needle here through to make sure I got the hole in there. Cause I'm going through a lot of layers, so that's when I'm kinda, I'm running into some problems cause I had that cotton layer in the middle as some extra. So yeah, it does go through, so that's good. And if you guys are just starting out and you're watching this for the very first time for some reason as to how to sew in a pamphlet stitch, um, I recommend before you even make your first journal just trying it out on a couple pieces of scratch paper and just sewing them together just so you kind of have your idea down on how you're going to, to do a pamphlet stitch. I do have some other videos out there that maybe describe it a little bit better. I don't know if you guys can tell or not, but I am under a little bit under the weather. My nose is a little runny. I was sick here now for a couple of weeks. Um, but because I record ahead, I know you guys probably didn't didn't notice that too much on on the videos because I usually record ahead, but my nose is a little little stuffed yet. I'm still getting over a little bug here. So that one has the holes and I'm happy with it. And we'll go back to this first page here and we'll make holes in this one too. Everything else I already pre-cut the holes on. So that should be good then. So I can go ahead and line all my other pages up. And that again, I'm going to sew on the outside. Okay. So what I like to do is the next step is to decide how you want, if you're going to sew in your pamphlet stitch, do you want where you tie it off? Do you want it to be inside your journal or on the outside of your journal? And I want mine on the inside. So I'm going to start on the inside and I'm gonna, I want it so that I can tie these two together in the middle. So I'm gonna start in the middle. So I'm going down, so here's the first hole. Here's a second, third, and fourth. I'm gonna start at this second one right here. And I'm gonna go through every single page. 
And again, um, I guess I forgot to say I'm already a, a step ahead before I start that. So here's my string and I am using, I like to either use wax thread, which I buy that sometimes like where you buy the leather making supplies like at Michael's or your other big box stores. But today I'm using some like heavy duty crochet thread that I have in my craft room um, is what I'm using. And then to measure what I like to do to figure out how long of a piece of thread I need. So at a minimum, I like to say, so if you take your longest page, which is these envelope ones, and you want to do it at least three times. So there's one, two, three. So you want at least three. That'll give you enough. And I have a little bit extra. But that'll give you enough to sew in one signature. So that's um, what I'm doing. If you have like several signatures you're sewing in, you'll want, want each signature to have the same length of thread. So let's start that again, um, going through that hole. So I do apologize that I forgot to talk about the size of the, or the length of the thread that you need. And again, it's kind of a blunt tip needle that I'm using. And this time for today's, since this was a very chunky one, I chose like the longest needle that I had, which is a couple of inches. Um, but otherwise, I don't think, as long as your needle goes through the holes, it doesn't really matter about the size. I just like one that's big enough that I can see and that's going to go through. And like I said, for today's episode, I chose a little bit longer needle because I knew that my signature was very chunky and I wanted to be able to go through it all. So hopefully you guys can kind of see, I'm just going through that same, the second hole down on each of my signatures. If you come across like you've had an embellishment or something that you've added that's going to get in the way, um, you can take it off and put it back on again later. So here's a piece that I only have three holes in, so I need to decide where I want it because um, it's only it's not going to fit on the whole thing. But I'm going to do that one more towards the top. And usually I find the first couple holes are kind of the, the tough ones to get going on, but then after that it, it kind of gets easier. Just trying to decide where I want this one if I want it. Yeah, we'll put that towards the bottom. You know, normally I don't think you'd have quite this many pages for a signature, but again, I'm just making a really chunky one. That was just my choice. Um, normally, I think in most journals that I make, I would have split up my pages to make a couple different signatures. So now I'm to this page where I just had the, the lace as um, a connector piece. And all I want to do again is make sure that I'm going to get it through at least two holes. And then we're going to go through the envelope part of this journal. And then because I want this added to it, um, I thought about just letting this be loose, but I want this connected too. I'm going to go ahead and, and maybe, um, I know this is kind of last minute, but I'm just going to set that aside. You can still see the needle sticking up, so I should be okay if I gently set that aside. I'm going to go ahead and put my little marks on here so I know at least where the where the holes are so I can see them on on this. Otherwise, I'm going to have a hard time. So I know I got a little off camera, but I just was making the marks with the pencil. So I am just going to go ahead and see if I can make if my little cutter thing will make holes in here, my Japanese screw punch, my hole punch. Sorry about that. I'm kind of doing things 
But I guess that's kind of what happens when your brain isn't functioning 100%. All right. Let's see. So I'm going to pick my signature back up here. Again, the needle's right there. And I'm going to go ahead and stick this little doily thing through. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull my thread through all those signatures. You do want to make sure that you don't pull it 100% of the way. You want to make sure that this stays, that you have maybe about the length of the page. And so what I like to do is I will just take a little piece of washi that I'll take out afterwards and I just kind of tape this in here just to kind of reinforce it a little bit to make sure. And then sometimes I'll even actually clip it just to um, make sure that I don't pull the string all the way through because then otherwise you'll have to start start all over again. And usually the first one's the hardest. The first two holes are the hardest to get going. And then after that, I think the rest are kind of easy. So I think I've got it pulled through as, you know, tight, but without pulling that all the way through. So now we're on the back side of the journal and I know with this doily, it's a little tougher for you guys to see. But now I'm going to work my way back up to the top hole, this one right here. So I'm going to go back through on the back side of the journal. And I'm going to go through the top hole. And because of the type that I have here, it's a little bit tougher, but hopefully you can see I still have the string here that from the, my first hole. Here's my needle. And so I'm going to very carefully go back through all the top holes that I have on my signature. You know, since this one didn't ha wasn't connected, that's okay, because I know I'm going to connect it down there, so I'm not worried about that one going through. And it's, the pages are just slipping from me, so that's, so I'm not going to worry about this one yet. I'll pick that one up when I go down that hole. And I just don't know how to do this any better on camera, but again, there's a hole right up here. So I'm going to, I'm just taking the needle and I'm going through each one. Like I said, the first, these first two holes that we're doing, you know, are probably a little bit more complex just to get them going and then they get easier. So with each one you do after this, it'll get easier once things are kind of in place. You know, norm and then normally for me too, you guys, um, I usually have this a little closer to my face when I'm doing it. Um, but I'm trying to make sure that I stay on camera so you guys can see a little bit of my thing. And like here, I was able to go through two pages at once. I know some people are able to go through all of their pages. Um, I just like to do each page at a time. This also gives me a chance to double check that the orientation and is right on all of my pages. And so again, this one's not going to get hooked into there. It'll get hooked in down there. So I don't worry about that. And I just find if I go slow and steady that usually I don't have too many issues. Of course, if you guys have done this before, just do whatever's easiest for you. But I kind of assume that that mostly the people that be watching this ones are ones that maybe haven't done as many pamphlet stitched before. And I do know um, if you don't like my instructions or the way I do it, I do know that there are other ways that other ladies do it. So if you guys do a search here on YouTube, um, 
you can watch kind of their instructions. I know the first few times I watched Pamphlet Stitch, I know I watched quite a few of you ladies doing it. And like I said, I found that I liked the way that um, Deli Girl did it with her little templates, and that worked best for me. Not having to always measure exactly how far you want to, to do your stitches. I know there's even some people that don't measure at all and they just eyeball it, um, which that works too if that's if that's what you like to do. But I've had good success with all my journals kind of staying put when I've done it this method where they're evenly measured across. So that's why I do it that way. So now once I'm back into my middle of my book again, I'm just going to slowly pull my string through. And that's going to start to tighten it up. It does, like I said, because I am doing this doily on the outside, that does kind of complicate things. Um, but I really wanted to do that, so that's why I'm adding it on there. So I'm going to make it tight. I'm not, but I don't want to make it so that the pages are bending. I don't want it to do it too tight. Um, just kind of just right, kind of like the Goldilocks method, as you guys can maybe see. Here's the string. It's tight, but it's not too loose. There'll be time to still kind of kind of make it perfect as we go. So, um, so I'm not too worried, but I like how that's looking so far. So then in the next step is I'm going to go back down through this second hole again. So if this was hole one, I'm going back down hole number two. And we've already gone through this one. And I can kind of see where, where I've gone before. So I'm going to go ahead and go through that one. I'm going to keep on going through all of these pages. And I might speed through this part. I will stop and talk when I get to the end um, of this hole just to tell you guys about the next step. So um, just so you don't have to watch me go through every single page. So now I'm back, um, through my second hole on the outside again. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the string through. And then what I like to do at this point is I kind of, sometimes I kind of pull things and I adjust them a little bit if I need to. Um, sometimes if this gets a little loose, you know, I kind of play with the strings here just to tighten things to make sure things get get tight where they need to go. So now once we're on the back side again, so we've come back through this hole, we're going to go down this hole on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So here's my next hole. And then hopefully, I don't know, you probably can't see it, but there's the needle. So I'm going to go back through all of these signa or this signature again, all these pages. And again, I like to do them one at a time. I know some people are able to push them all the way through, but um, I like to just make sure that I've grabbed every piece and it goes through. So I individually look at each page as the needle's going through. And for those of you who've never maybe done this before, I know it looks complicated, but it really, really isn't. The first, you know, I, again, I would just recommend doing it, um, trying it out once, and then once you've done, like, some scrap paper, and of course, because I have a weird cover, this is not cooperating with me very well. But at least you guys get to see that even those of us who have made these journals for a long time, they don't always, they don't always cooperate for us either. So. And again, I know part of my problem right now is that 
I, I usually do this closer to my face, so I'm struggling a little bit just because it's... Okay, so I apologize, but just because I'm doing this, this little one right here, I do have to put it in front of my face. Um, so I am going to have to go off camera. I do apologize, but I don't want to rip my pages either. So... And I'm just trying to look at it on a side view so I can, it's a little closer to my eye here. I do have reading glasses, so my vision isn't as good as it was when I was younger. Okay, I think I got through that one. I just, I was just was struggling. I just couldn't see as well. So I do have my reading glasses, but then of course I accidentally went through where I didn't want to go through on this book page. Yeah, I just had to check and make sure I was still on camera. I'm just trying to look at it from a slightly different view so I can see that, hopefully see the angles and my, where my holes are. Again, here's my needle and it's going through the different holes on the different pages. So I'm gonna to continue to do that for each of my pages and I might fast forward through a little bit of this if I'm not talking and um, hopefully by now, you guys just kind of know I'm going through each page. Whew, we're through that one. So again, I'm just gonna gently pull it through, open and close the journal a couple of times. Um, and I'll tighten my stuff at the end. So. so now next when we're in this one, so now we're in the third hole on the inside, I'm gonna go down to the fourth hole and go through again. So, um, and I find it easier to go this way for whatever reason than the cover. But I'm gonna go through each of those holes again. And I usually find that this one gets pretty easy. Um, things seem to line up because the other holes are already kind of lined up nicely, that this one usually goes a little faster for me, in theory. Um, we'll see, I guess, when I get to the end of this, if it's still that way. And again, I know it's really tough to see, but there's my needle and I'm just going through each of the holes on each of the pages. So now I did make it all the way through, so I just gotta pull my string through. So now the last step is to go from four and we're gonna go back through hole number three. And I guess one thing I didn't say earlier when you're going through the same holes that there's already string, I try to make sure that my needle is going like next to the other string and I'm not like putting it through like the middle of the string, um, I'm not catching the string, I'm just going through next to it. You know, so here's this string and then the needle's right below it. I know it's tough to see, let me see if I can zoom in just for a minute here. You know, instead of accidentally putting my needle through the middle of the string, I wanna make sure it's next to it, whether it's above it or below it, it, it doesn't really matter, um, just as long as it's not through it. And again, this is just a very fat journal, so that's why I think I'm having a few problems. So I guess that's one reason to maybe have fewer pages in your signatures and not overdo it is. Okay, so again, the same page, I'm having a hard time seeing from a distance. So I'm just gonna have to put it closer to my eyes for a second here, guys. Okay, I think I got through it. I just had to make sure it was lined up right. I don't wanna. I don't want to create a new hole. So I am going to, um, just because I'm having a hard time, I need to pull it closer to my face. So I'll probably just show you guys again when I get to the very end. I don't want to go off camera for like three minutes and have you guys watch like absolutely nothing. So I'm just going to stop the video and come back. I'm just having a hard time seeing when it's this far from my eyes. So I just need to pull it a little closer to my eyes. So I do apologize for that. 
Um, but again, I'm just gonna be taking my needle and going back through that same hole number three until I get to the inside and then I'll join up again with you guys to show you the next step. So I'm back and I thought I was recording and I wasn't, um, so, but now I am recording. I did come back through that third hole and the next step is I did take off the little washi tape that was up here um, because I am gonna be tying these two together. But before I start tying things, um, then the other thing I did is I did undo all my binder clips that I had on here that were holding um, some of my stuff together to make it easier to sew. And I just kind of want to take a look at how it feels, just the way I've I've done it, because some of these might need to be, as you can see, some of these are a little loose. And I don't want them super loose, but I don't want them super tight either. When they're really tight, you're going to find that you're going to tear holes through your pages. Um, so you kind of want to find that happy medium. And so that's where I'm at right now, is just adjusting all of those. And I'll do what I can on camera, but again, I might have to... Um, hold it closer to my face and I'm just kind of adjusting I'm picking up where some of the the strings are and I'm tightening them um, just kind of feeling them how they feel because I will like I said want to tie this in the middle and so um, I'm just going to hold them kind of like if they were tied together with my fingers here. They're not tied, but I just kind of want to, again, take a look at everything. See, you know, if these any of these feel tight or loose on the back side. Again, it'll be easier if you don't have the doily um, or the envelope flip. If it's just pages, it's going to be a lot easier. But again, um, this book just has, you know, the envelope flips in here which make it a little more complicated so um, again if you're just starting out I would probably just try and sew in or sew together just some some pages first before you add in all that other stuff just to to kind of get a feel for it so I think and I'm going to take a peek holding it again kind of at the last on the on these pages too I also like to kind of flip pages um, just see how they feel, if they feel like anything. Because if you have signatures that are like the pages are li really wonky, like if you go like this and they're really wonky and really lo loose, that means that your um, your pamphlet stitch is not tight enough somewhere. So, um, But it seems like everything that I've done here look, feels pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and tie it off. And I just do that by tying it knot in the middle. I'll zoom in here so you guys can hopefully see a little bit better. So I have a knot and again I'm, I'm tying it tight but I don't want it too tight because I don't want to rip my holes. And originally I was planning on doing this on the outside and then putting on the outside of that other cover and hiding them because if you do it on the back side and you like put um, like some pretty trim over it, you don't see your ties, but it's also kind of fun to do it too on the inside and see where you've tied your things to. So I'm gonna go ahead and, now I like to just do mine by making a knot and I'm just trying to make sure it's tight, but not too tight. So I just kind of go slow and methodical. Um, just to make sure I'm happy with it. So there is a knot right there in the middle. If you want at this point, you can make a bow. I know some people make bows, but what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do the last thing. So I know I think I have 34 ideas in our journal. And so this will be idea number 35 on how to use up little bits of lace. So I am gonna cut off because I have some excess on here of that cotton thread. So I have two ends and so so idea number 35 is, and I had, so whether you use some sort of lace and you fold it over, um, like if this was your lace, you could maybe fold it over and add it to the end just as a little embellishment. 
to the end of your lace. You could also like, on the one page we put lace over a butterfly or a heart. You could put some hearts with some lace on it at the end. But I did find this trim in my extras pile. And so I'm gonna use four of these, so I'll have two left. But I am going to cut this trim and we're going to glue this on to the ends of the string. So again, this is idea number, thought f number 35 and it's using um, little bits of lace on your tie closure as a decorative element. Uh, mine's more of a trim today than it is lace, but um, but that's okay, that's just what I had and I like to use this type of trim on my closures. So the th next thing to decide is, so here's my string, is I need to decide do I want it hanging below my journal or do I want it in the middle of my journal? And I think I want it hanging below my journal. And so I just have a little more trimming to do on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on this and I'm going to do it on the wrong side. So there's the good side of the trim and I'm just using some Fabrifix or Fabri-Tac. And I'm just going to glue that, oops, where do I want, I want it down here. So I just got to make sure I rub off that glue that I had up there. So I have glue on this side, and then I'm gonna glue one more on top of it. But again, like I said, you could fold over a piece of lace like this if you wanted to do something similar with like a scrap piece of lace. Or maybe if you had, let me see if I have any, like maybe some tiny little, if you made a little like snippet with some lace, you could put a snippet on both sides. If you wanted to do that too, that would be another idea with some stuff that we've already made. Or you could cut up a little snippet off of your snippet roll if you made a snippet roll or a lace master board. And I usually like to not have mine be equal, like so that they're not parallel. I like one to be longer and one to be shorter. And then I like to, you, which you wouldn't have to, but you could, um, I like to trim this off. Other possibilities too, if you don't want to use lace or a little trim like this, you could tie like a bead or even a button on the end. I've done that too and it's really cute. Or even if you have like a paper image, you could do, as long as you have, have it on both sides, like you could do a heart or a digital or something, a digital butterfly, something like that. Um, so there's all sorts of ideas for tying on to your closures. So just an embellishment on your closure, lace embellishment on your closure. And I'm going to have to leave these on the outside because there's still a little bit of glue on those. But this is now my journal, my little bits of lace journal. Very chunky. What do you guys think, huh? I like it. I'm very happy with it. And so um, again, you know, here's my pamphlet stitch on the outside. And again, it's gonna go inside of this little protective cover that we made. So it'll just house in there and then I can tie this shut. I think this is the chunkiest journal I have ever made. <laughs> That's for sure. But I love it. And I guess the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, because again, I made this closure bigger than what I needed and it's really long. So I am going to, now that I ha know that I'm not going to be doing any more in here, again, that's just kind of a protective cover. And if I ever decide in the future to put a different type of journal in there, I could of course re reuse it for that. But I am going to cut off the excess of this, so then uh, now I'll have some more little scrap lace, I guess, that I can use for something else. So I have that ex extra right there that'll go in my pile to play with for another day. 
And then the other thing that I hadn't really added yet that we did in one of our videos recently was the, the tassel. And so I am just going to look at it this way and decide if I want to put the, the tassel on, on this or on the inside. And I'm pretty sure I want, or I could maybe put it on the cover too. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to put it on the spine, I think. So I'm going to put it right there. But it also would look cool hanging off of the cover too. Oh, I think I like that better. So yeah, let's just leave it there then. I think I'm going to put it on the cover. All right, you guys, so I'm going to call that good for today's video. I know it was kind of long, but um, I did want to do as much as, as I could on camera for those who, of you who are newer or still learning your pamphlet stitch, just to show you how I do it. You know, sometimes it goes perfectly. Sometimes you have a little bit of struggles with it. And it, obviously I had a couple of struggles um, with it not being close to my face and doing it on camera, but that's okay. I like to show you guys my process when I can. And I will be back for one more episode where I'll just do a whole walkthrough of the video. I don't think this video has already been kind of long, so I'll do that on the next video. So until then, um, thank you again, everybody, so much for watching, and have a wonderful day and happy crafting.